take action. Take action. One of my favorite quotes is by Henry Wardsworth Longfellow. He said, the heights by great men reached and kept were not attained by sudden flight, but they while their companions slept were toiling upward in the night. What does that mean? You gotta work. You gotta do some doing this. You can't just sit around and hope it'll happen. One of the steps, one of the actions you need to take is called asking. And many of us, see we wrote a book, Mark and I wrote a book called Dare to, uh, Dare to Win. And it was a book of all these kind of things, and people went out and they read the book, and still a lot of people weren't successful. And we thought, what's the problem here? And as we began to analyze and interview people, we realized one of the main things that was blocking most people was the fear of asking for what they wanted. They wouldn't go up and just say, can I borrow money? Will you support my dream? Will you volunteer for school? Will you lend me your car? Whatever it is they need, they were so afraid of being rejected. And so we wrote a book called The Aladdin Factor, How to Ask for and Get Everything You Want. And we were doing all that research, we ran across a girl named Marquita Andrews. And Marquita Andrews was the living example of what we call ask, 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 ask. Because you're going to have to ask a lot of people. And Marquita, her mother, when she was a little girl, came up to her and said, you know, Marquita, I have a dream. My dream is to travel around the world, but I also have a dream for you. I want you to graduate college. Problem is, I'm a waitress. I don't see how I can underwrite both dreams on a waitress's salary. But I'll make a deal with you. If you'll go to college and agree that after you graduate, you'll take 25% of your income for the first number of years and put that in savings to send me around the world, then I'll pay for your college education. But if you're not willing to do that, then I don't know if I want to pay for your college education. Well, what is she? She's like seven or nine at the time. She goes, sure, deal. You know. Well, later that year, she joins the Brownie Scouts. And the Brownies are part of the Girl Scouts, and they came out with their annual cookie drive. And they had a contest that year. A girl who sells most cookies wins trip for two around the world. Marquita says, I'm getting out of this one easy. So she starts selling cookies like you can't believe. Now, in her first year as a Brownie Scout, she sold 3,526 boxes of Girl Scout cookies. Most women who've sold Girl Scout cookies, if you sell three or 400 boxes, that is a big deal. 3,526. How'd she do it? Ask, 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 ask. She lived in New York, high population concentration, right? She would go into high-rise apartment buildings and condos, and as people would come down in the morning and back from work, she would just be there. Do you buy your cookies yet? Do you buy your cookies yet? Well, you want to buy some cookies? And if she bought one, they say, well, you want to buy two? Don't you know people? She would just ask, ask, ask. Then one day, she finds herself at 14 years old. She wrote a book called How to Sell More Cookies, Condos, Cadillacs, Computers, and Everything Else. And she was the keynote speaker at Radio City Music Hall to the million dollar round table of insurance salesmen, all people who'd sold over a million dollars in commissions and all this stuff. And she's up there talking to a thousand people. At the end of her talk, she says, I want you all to look under your seat. You'll find a three by five card. Take that out and write a number between five and 10 on the card. So everybody did. And she said, that's how many boxes of Girl Scout cookies I want you to buy for me today as you leave here. That day she sold 7,000 boxes of Girl Scout cookies. She's in the Guinness Book of World Records. Before she retired, she sold over 32,000 boxes. Isn't that astounding? Hasn't been beaten yet. But what does she do? Ask, 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 ask. Very powerful tool. Now, she had one final clause, a little phrase she says, SW, 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 SW. What does that mean? Some will, some won't. So what? Someone's waiting. So if you ask enough people, eventually someone's going to say yes. If I asked everyone in this room, do you have a red car, eventually someone would say yes. It doesn't matter. If you ask enough people, you're going to get your dream met. Teach you one word, how to deal with no when you get a no from somebody. And again, I'd like you to write this down, write it in your brain if you don't have anything to write it with on paper and so forth. And here's the, here's the word, it's very simple. When someone says no to you, what I want you to say to yourself real loud inside your head is the word next. Now what does that mean? Ask somebody else. Absolutely. How many people live on the planet? Five billion people. Someone wants to do what you want to do. Someone wants to get involved in your dreams. Someone wants to support you. Some, you may have to ask a lot of people. Remember, ask, 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 ask. So when they say no, you say next. And here's another clue most people don't realize. If you ask somebody and they say no, does that mean you can never come back and ask them again? No. Little kids are so good at it. Mommy, can I go to the store with you? No. Oh, come on, Mom, please let me go to the store with you. They go away. Mom, you, you are going to let me go to the store with you. And they wear you down, you know? So that's another thing you can, next time can be, right? So don't let no stop you. No just means get creative, get, get going. Now, what stops people from asking? What stops people from doing? It's something called fear. 
We're all afraid. We're afraid we're going to look stupid. We're afraid we're going to get rejected. I love this person who did the acronym F-E-A-R. stands for fantasized experiences appearing real or false evidence appearing real. Because when you close your eyes and you fantasize something like you're not going to be able to pay your bills or they're going to take your house or you're going to flunk out of school, then your body reacts like it's real.